All right, I was playing around with it a little off camera and um, um, a couple of interesting things I found was uh, I like this one here. So we have a, um, we have some type of connector and then we have a component in the middle, all right? And the way that I've been using it is I've been attaching a, uh, a 50 ohm load here, all right? And so what that does is we basically then have um, a capacitor in series, right? So if this is, if the device under test is a capacitor, uh, we then have this, right? And so when we start out at low frequencies, it, 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 it won't go through that capacitor. Um, it just, it just won't go. And so it's going to look like an open. Okay. And then as we go higher and higher and higher in frequency, then this capacitor will look like a short. And then what we have here is just a resistor. So this would be a load. Okay. And so we have an open and a load and on a Smith chart, an open is here and a load is here. All right. And the path that you take to get to one to the other in a series situation is, is this line here. Okay. And then I showed another one also yesterday where we had, um, we were using this circuit with a 50 ohm load and that basically creates a, 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 a circuit that looks like this, where we have uh, the capacitor in parallel with the, with the resistor, all right? So at DC, there's no conduction between the capacitor. The capacitor won't let through DC. So we start out with a load. And then as the frequency gets higher and higher and higher, then the uh, capacitor looks like a short and we go to a short. Okay, so we're going to go between a load and a short. And on a Smith diagram, here's the load and here's the short. And the path that we take is this one. And that's why you take these different paths. Um, this one goes in, uh, in this direction and this one also goes in, in this direction, right? From, from DC to AC, from DC to AC. So I think I hope that helps uh, kind of distinguishing these two. Now, I also had a situation. Let me get a new piece of paper here. I also had a situation where uh, I had a little kink here before it got to 50 ohms. There was a little kink there and I couldn't quite figure out what that kink was and I figured it out. Um, so when I have these boards, I calibrate the end of the cable. All right. So I'm calibrating at the end of the cable, but when I'm measuring, I'm actually some distance away from where I calibrated. And this is electrical length. Okay. And in VNAs, you can compensate for that. You can actually tell the machine, Oh, I know I calibrated here, but I'm actually have some extra length in there. And your nano VNA can do that. You can put in a electrical length. And when I put in a particular electrical length, I can get rid of that kink. All right. And so, yeah, let's go take a look at that. I think that that'd be interesting. All right. So we saw this yesterday, uh, where I had this little kink here and I can, uh, I can zoom in on that and you can see that it's a, uh, it kind of follows the right line and it should just continue to 50 ohms. It just continue up, but it, it, it veers off. Um, and we can add an electrical delay um, to the, to the box. Okay. And, uh, oops, I'm still on scale. I'm going to add electrical delay. Let's see, where am I? Oh, here we go. I pushed the wrong button and we can dial in some electrical, electrical delay. Let me put in positive delay. And, uh, if I put in a, a certain amount of electrical delay, you can see that, uh, that we've sort of fixed our problem here. We put in the electrical delay again, and we can sort of overcompensate for it. And it goes the other way. My hands probably, arms probably in the way. We can overcompensate for it. 
or we can undercompensate for it, okay? And then we can kind of get here, and we can kind of get to, it's probably, it's probably around there. Now, why doesn't it get all the way to 50 ohms? Well, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> uh, scale. But it gets rid of that little, that little crook. Now, another thing that I'm kind of wondering is, let's say that we pick, uh, let's say that we pick marker, let's put the marker at 100 megahertz. Okay, so, well, maybe not 100 megahertz. Let's see here. Uh, what's a good megahertz? Let's say 35 megahertz. 35 megahertz. So we have a marker at 35 megahertz, and we're measuring um, a bunch of stuff inside the VNA. It's doing computations and things, and it's giving us 52 ohms of real uh, resistance. It's giving us minus 48 uh, ohms of reactance, and it's giving us 93.3 picofarads. And it would say, oh, that, that's probably what's causing that. And so uh, it's measuring that. And we have a 100, 100 picofarad capacitor in the circuit. So yeah, that's probably an accurate measurement. All right, so that's one way of measuring picofarads is to have a series um, circuit with a 50 ohm resistor, right? So the capacitor is in series with 50 ohms. Um, and we're measuring sort of here in the middle of the chart. Now, the other way you can do this is, um, let's see here, let me change it. Okay, so now I've changed it to, um, the circuit is Capacitor to ground, no resistors involved, just capacitor to ground. And this is the way that I see a lot of people on YouTube measure capacitors. They just stick it in, capacitor to ground, make the measurement, and uh, here's the measurement, and we're measuring 97, 96. It's kind of bouncing around a bit, but we could add averaging. Let's see, why don't we do that? Averaging on, and our average factor is 16. All right, so it should calm down after a while. And we're getting about 90, 96.95, let's say, 96.95. Remember that number, have to wait for the averaging. Let's turn it on and off again. So we'll wait for the averaging. Uh, we're getting 93.65. So which is the more accurate measurement? Um, I don't know. So that's really interesting. Um, I don't know if this method is better. I kind of feel better about this method for some strange reason, just because the, the it's a it's the, the information that you're getting off of a Smith chart is the gamma. And, and here you're getting kind of in the center of the gamma. And when you're on the outsides, I don't know, it just feels, this just feels like it should be more accurate. Just gut feel, I have, you know, I have no, uh, no mathematics, any reason why that would be. Um, or maybe it's just, you know, the circuit's different and there's extra capacitance or I don't know, maybe it's just, there's a little bit of parallel capacitance and this, so it's measuring lower or a little bit of straight, I don't know, who knows? But uh, they, you do get different numbers. The two methods, you actually get two different numbers. So, but, but they're close enough. I mean, for garage work, that, I mean, they're fine. But if you were really designing these things, it'd be interesting to hear from the RF community. Um, if you believe that a capacitor to ground is the correct way to measure them, or a capacitor in series with a 50 ohm resistor is a better measurement. Um, I, I don't know. 